Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Rafael P. Roman. We begin tonight with some troubling new numbers in America's worsening opioid epidemic. According to recent numbers from the Centers for Disease Control, overdoses from opioids jumped by 30 percent in just one year. Overdoses are up across every age group and in every region of the country, including ours. Long Island has been hit especially hard. According to official reports, about 600 Long Islanders died from opioid overdoses last year alone. One community at the heart of the crisis in Long Island is Massapequa in Nassau County. And joining me now is Nassau County Executive Laura Curran, who is working with police and health professionals to track overdoses across the county. Ms. Curran, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Rafael. So before we get to the solutions, let's talk a little about the problem. Could you elaborate about the problems of opioid overdoses in Long Island, particularly in your county? We really do have a mushrooming opioid epidemic in across Long Island and in Nassau County. Last year, we saw almost 800 overdoses, 200 of which were fatal, almost 200 of which were fatal. So if you think about that, it's a real public health crisis. And if you think of it in terms of, you know, if we had that many people getting murdered in our county, that would be, a, you know, there would be such outrage. Yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit about the solutions. You have recently introduced a program called OD Map. Tell us what that is and how it's helping to deal with this crisis. Sure. Our police commissioner, Patrick Ryder, came up with this OD map, okay. and it's basically targeting crimes associated with drug use, for instance, people breaking into cars, those kinds of larcenies, overlaying those statistics with where the overdoses are happening. And when you have a cluster of those two kinds of events happening, overdoses and those larcenies, you know that you've got a heroin problem there. So we're using that real-time reporting and then bringing our police force in to do arrests, to do enforcement. But we know that we cannot arrest ourselves out of this crisis. Mm -hmm. We're working on awareness and prevention and treatment as well. And our district attorney, Madeline Singis, is working very hard on filling what we call the treatment gap. Because mm -hmm. someone can be treated with a, the medicine called Narcan when they're overdosing, yeah. can be brought back from an overdose, and then there's no treatment. They're put right back out on the street to start using again. Yeah, and we'll talk about all that uh, before this conversation is over. But going back to OD Map, to what degree does that go beyond a law enforcement and, and, and arrests? To what degree does that deal with the treatment that you say is necessary? Well, that's such a great question. So we had a, a, an operation. We've had two so far, one in Massapequa, one in East Meadow. We'll take the Massapequa one. There were about 60 arrests of those drug-related arrests, of those four were dealers, so they will be held accountable. Those users, those addicts then, once they're arrested, we can steer them toward diversion and toward treatment, and that's where the health professionals come in. So, you know, uh, Newsweek recently had an op-ed which kind of echoed what you just said, that you're doing a great job, but more treatment, more resources are necessary. Are you getting the necessary resources from the state, from the federal government, to deal with this in Nassau County? Well, we've got to harness the resources that are available right now, make the most of what we've got. Another thing we have to do is really engage with our schools, and that's a conversation that we're having now. See, in Nassau County, we've got 56 independent school districts that are mm. very, you know, they're their own entities. So we're engaging with, with each and every one of them to try to tackle this crisis. So th this crisis, the opioid crisis, the president, President Trump, has said it is, is particularly important to him. Um, have, has the federal government, in fact, uh, demonstrated that this is a, this is a crisis and helped you um, sufficiently? You know, we're working with our Congress, with our congressional delegation on getting the resources we need. We're working with the state, but we're also working very closely with our communities. So we're having community forums, for instance, in Massapequa and East Meadow. We had one in Massapequa where, you know, scores of residents turned out. They're listening to our police officers. They're listening to our drug resource experts and getting the information they need so that they can get educated, so that parents can get educated. What are the warning signs? You know, those pinprick pupils, for example, for people who are on opioids. What, what to look for? What are the danger signs? Because all too often, a child has died and the parent had no idea their child was using, or their friends knew and never told. So it's really getting to the root of it and really letting people be aware. And that's the prevention and the education piece. You know, according to the CDC, um, what's making this crisis particularly deadly, what's killing people is the synthetic opioid, fentanyl. Is that what you're seeing in Nassau County? 
Oh, absolutely. Fentanyl is so dangerous, and it's mixed with heroin or sold instead of heroin, and it's many times stronger than heroin and more pure. And I, that's why we're seeing this spike in overdoses. And there, the, the Narcan that I, the, I forget the generic name, that's the brand name, is a godsend because if someone's overdosing, you can treat them with Narcan, they're back immediately. On the other hand, if you don't have the treatment part, then they just go right back to using. And, and talking about Narcan, I mean, some people say that there is an, uh, a negative aspect to it, unintended negative aspect to it, that some addicts or users believe that Narcan will save them from a, an overdose death if, if they do overdose, um, and that makes them ease up on the concerns. Are you, are you finding that? Absolutely. You know, you hear about these incidents, these anecdotes of, of people getting together. They have, they're doing heroin or fentanyl or whatever it is, and there's Narcan in the middle of the table there. So if someone overdoses, they can just, you know, treat them and then go right back on to, to partying again. It's a, it's a problem. How, do you, how are you dealing with that it's, problem? It's a real double-edged sword. You know, it's a yeah. godsend because it could save your life and put you on the right path. But we're hearing from our police officers, they'll treat, or our fire, you know, our fire fighters are also yeah. trained in how to, our, all of our first responders are trained in how to use this. So you're, you overdose on Friday, you overdose on Saturday, by Sunday you're using again, and then you're overdose and you're dead. So in about 30 seconds that we have left, uh, what's your prognosis? Is this crisis going to get worse before it gets better? I think we are a hold of it. I am so happy with the police commissioner and this OD map using real-time reporting to really zero in, hold the dealers accountable, and get people, get addicts and users the treatment they need to get them out of the downward spiral of addiction. All right. Uh, County Executive Coran, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an, uh, an important conversation. Thank you very much.